Hey, this is Bandu here from No Sleep Creative. Today, we're going to learn how to create a multi line text grid in After Effects just using one single text layer. Let's dive in. So, unlike our previous method, which read the same text across our line, we'll be splitting our text into individual elements. This technique uses a split function using a comma as a delimiter to create an array, and then we can tell After Effects to repeat each element individually. So for example, we have our text layer that says Alpha Bravo Charlie over here. Before we begin, we got to make sure to include comma in our text because we'll be using the split function to kind of as a delimiter to kind of separate them. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go into our source text property and hold down Alt on Windows and Option on Mac and click on the stopwatch. And we can type in our expression. So let me just move this above so we can see more of it. And I think before I begin is to increase the font size of our expression so you guys can see it clearly. So I'm pressing Control Alt colon to open up the preferences. I'm going to go into uh, scripting expression and maybe we can do 16. Hopefully that's not too big. So let's click OK. All right. Now let's option click on our stopwatch for Mac and Alt on Windows. And we can type in s is equals to value semicolon. So this will store our source text in this variable. And then after that, we create an array called string array is equals to s dot split parentheses double quote comma. So this was, was like, like what it does, it was split it into an array, right? And then after that, we will define the grid size with the number of columns and number of rows. So we can create a variable called num columns. Let's do five. And then for num number of rows, we can do 10. Okay. And then we can repeat, uh, use the repeat function to and add a line break after uh, for each individual element, just like how we did for our previous video. And we can type in row one is equals to string array. And to access individual array element, we type in, you know, a number starting from zero, right? It doesn't count from one. Uh, it starts from zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So the first element, right, alpha, is actually stored in the uh, in the index uh, zero of this array called string array. Okay, so we are going to use the repeat function. We'll type in dot repeat parentheses, and we'll put in num columns. And then we'll type in plus double quote, and we're going to add a line break. We'll type in backslash R and then semicolon. And we can actually copy this and then or hit control D. That will duplicate the line you're on. And we'll change this to row two, row three. And we'll change the array index number to be one and two. And then after that, we will store this into a single array called rows. And then we'll type in row one plus row two plus row three semicolon. Finally, we will use the repeat function uh, to repeat everything that we've created. All right. And let's click. And you can see that it has repeat uh, into individual line. But let's take a closer look. You will notice that the alpha, right? There's no space between the alpha. Uh, so we might have to make a modification to our, our how we, uh, you know, change out the text, how we split the text. So all we have to do is just add a space here because it's splitting, right? It's splitting the element based on a comma. So it was recognizing this as just, you know, one word. But in our case, we had a space before Bravo. Um, so, you know, that's why there were spaces. But to make things consistent, maybe we'll do alpha space, Bravo space, Charlie space. So we get that, you know, everything's kind of uniform. Now we can turn back the expression and we can see that it has been centered. I mean, not centered, it has repeat itself. In my previous tutorial, I have, I wrote an expression to repeat, uh, to center the anchor point. Um, I'm going to speed up the process by using a preset that I have so we can move on. Um, perhaps I'll share this in the future. It's called lock anchor point and I get to specify uh, which uh, area of the of the layer I want to lock an anchor point to. And so this way, if I were to change the number, 
right? Uh, the, the number of columns or number of rows. So maybe I can change this to five. Uh, it will always automatically center it. Uh, this is just one of a custom setup I created that I'm hoping to create, you know, a tutorial about it in the future. Okay, so back to the tutorial. Uh, so while this method can create the grid, it's not the most efficient. It requires manual adjustment for adding or removing uh, words, right? So it can cause some potential error. For example, if I want to add the word delta in it, I would have to do this, turn it off, right? And then add in the word delta. And then if I turn it back on, you can see that, okay, we don't have the word delta. So we have to create, duplicate this and then type in uh, four and it changes to three and then add this to, to uh, add another variable, row four, right, to it. And we, we get that, that fourth word repetition. So, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's just that as we want to make design faster, we don't want to come back to our code and you know, keep uh, messing around with it because this might lead to error. We should try aim to create a setup that allows us, that gives us the flexibility to just type in whatever we want and it'll update accordingly. Instead of manually defining each row, we can use a for loop statement to automate this process. So in short, a for loop statement is just a way to repeat some action in your code a bunch of time until a certain condition is met, right? So this way we can easily adjust the number of words without having to rewrite our code. Okay, so to modify our expression over here with a for loop, first of all, let's create another variable called results is equals to, and then double quote. So it's, we're gonna keep it empty. This is where we will store, you know, the text that repeated. We're gonna, you know, get rid of everything over here. We don't need to, we won't be relying on the repeat function uh, as the main way to create a text grid. Um, we are going to use the for loop statement. We're gonna type in for, i is equals to zero, semicolon, i is less than the number of rows, right, semicolon, i plus plus. So it will just keep incrementing until, you know, it will keep testing the condition. Uh, and, and, and after that, if it's not true, it will stop looping, right? So in this case, it will loop five times. Whatever, whatever code that we have here will loop five times, right? Because that's what we specify. All right, so next, let's create a variable called element index, or in short, le index is equals to i percentage sign string array dot length. Okay, semicolon. So what this does is that it makes sure that we're creating index number, right, that go, only goes between zero and the length of, the, of our array. Next, we will access the string array right, the element number. And then after that, we'll type in dot repeat num columns plus the the, uh, the line break, right? So make sure to include, include the backslash r. And we want to add this into our results over here. We can, you know, put a result plus equals, right? So we're just going to keep adding on to it. Um, and then we'll add a semicolon at the end. And then after that, what we want to do is to type in result. Okay, to give us the final output. And we'll click OK. And then you can see that it works. Um, let's create our two slider controls to create the num columns and num rows. And then we increase the number. I gotta make sure save this. 10, 10. Cool. Okay, now to test this out, what we can do is to turn off the expression. And then perhaps we get rid of like a delta. And let's keep the white space at the back and over here. Okay, keep it consistent, right? Alpha space, Bravo space, Charlie space. And we we'll turn back the expression. You can see, you know, we're just repeating the lines, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. And we can increase the number of rows, right? We also limit it to, you know, to exactly the number of rows rather than repeating all the rows by, say, 12 times, okay? Another question you may have is that what if your word, the word that you want to repeat has a comma in it? 
Then in that case, let's turn this off. Let's do an example. Um, let's just say you have a word that say alpha comma one, and then bravo comma two, and then Charlie comma three, right? So instead of using a comma to, to kind of, del uh, you know, as a delimiter, we can change it to something uh, more uh, obscure, some a character that you wouldn't use. So let's use like a hashtag, uh, a pound symbol. We can do the same to our expression and replace a comma. All right. And you can see we get one alpha comma one alpha. So this is not how we want to read it. We want it to be alpha comma one. And then after that, you know, we can kind of see the segregation. So maybe what we can do is we add, you know, five spaces, right? About five spaces uh, after after the word, after each phrase, and then we can see it being repeated, right? And now you can see alpha one, bravo two, Charlie three, very distinctly. And then we can go into our text animator and add in a position. Right, and we get rid of the range selector, and then we add in a selector wiggly, and then after that we can, you know, in, we can kind of randomize the position by increasing this like that, and then changing the um, the base on to be lines, right? So this way you can can offset it. Uh, you can set the wiggle to zero, and you know so that it will. It won't wiggle. This is just a quick way to randomize uh, the arrangement of your uh, of the each line, and there you have it: a text grid with repeated different lines of text. So go ahead and experiment with this technique in your own project and see how it enhances your animation or design. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share, subscribe. So for more tips and tricks, and until next time, let's keep creating.